And the story that I'm going to talk about, it's not very often, I'll say this, shout out to my boy McCore Maker, because it is not very often that there is any college hoop story that becomes really maybe the biggest story in sports at any given time of the year, except for maybe March. But my boy McCore Maker certainly did that on Friday morning. I wake up, I'm on vacation, uh, getting away, trying to just chill, decompress, whatever. I don't get up till about 8 Pacific, which is about 11 Eastern, and about seven hours early. The whole news cycle had already happened. McCore Maker, five-star forward slash center slash wing slash kind of a KG, KD type clone, commits to Howard. And so I know everybody knows that story. But as I said off the top, he is a very high-profile player, certainly had the opportunity to go to UCLA, had the opportunity to go to Kentucky. He instead chooses Howard, and as I said, he became essentially the most high-profile player, I would say, in football or basketball to ever commit to an HBCU, historically black college or university. And it's obviously, look, it's a mega story, right? Anytime that a high-profile player goes. Anytime a high-profile player commits, period, it's a big story. If Cade Cunningham commits to Oklahoma State, if B.J. Boston commits to Kentucky, uh, you know, whatever. Devin Askew commits to Kentucky, it's a big story. But this is obviously a huge mega story because it isn't often that not only does a player choose a school off the beaten path, but that he chooses one that is a mid-major and, of course, has all the historical implications that comes with choosing an HBCU, a historically black college or university, college and, you know, college and university, whatever. You get the point that I'm trying to make. And so this is mega, right? And this has been the talk in college athletics for a long time. Will we see one of these high profile players commit to an HBCU? There have been players who have taken unofficial visits, official visits. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, who was the number one high school football player two years ago in the class of 2019, I believe he took an official to Florida A&M. Obviously, last recruiting cycle, Josh Christopher, top 10 prospect, top 15 prospect who ended up at Arizona State, took an official to Howard. McCour Maker, who I'm, I'm going to call Thon Maker at some point during this segment, so I apologize in advance. McCour Maker took a, a visit to Howard, but I don't think that anybody really believed that Howard was actually going to be the pick until he officially made the pick on Friday. So first of all, credit to the kid. Uh, He chose the college that he believes is best for him. And of course, now the conversation is, is this guy a pioneer? Is he going to become the first of many to choose an HBCU, use maybe that one-and-done year, that one-and-done opportunity to play at an HBCU? I don't know the answer to that, but what I do want to talk about is the bigger picture ramifications because I do think there is an entire conversation that no one is having, and because of my background in college basketball, it is a conversation that I want to have and I want to be real with you, and I've said it all along and I've said it on this show, so I'm going to continue to keep it real. I do have my doubts that this guy ever plays college basketball, so let's get into why, and this isn't a criticism of the kid, it's not a criticism of his family, it's not a criticism of anything. Here is the reality. So here is why I am a little dubious as to whether McCourt Maker will ever play college basketball. And it's very simply this. It has nothing to do with him and everything to do with the adults in his life, and specifically the adult in his life who kind of runs things, right? For people who don't follow recruiting day to day, usually there is an adult that usually has a big say in what a kid decides to do. Sometimes it's a high school coach, sometimes it's an AAU coach, sometimes it's mom, sometimes it's dad. And in some cases, you have the situation like a McCore maker where there's somebody from outside the family uh, who has a really big influence on the kid. And in the case of McCore maker, this guy's name is Ed Smith. And so let me tell you a little about Ed Smith because I think many of you will remember him from Thawne Maker's recruitment. But let me just say that this guy does not have the most sparkling reputation within college basketball circles, and I want to explain why, because I'm not being critical, I'm not rooting against the kid, I'm not rooting against this adult in his life, all I'm doing is giving you the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is this, this guy Ed Smith does not have the best reputation in college basketball, and it's funny because as I said a minute ago, I think many of you remember Thawne Maker's recruitment. Thawne Maker is, of course, McCourt Maker's uh, older cousin. Thawne Maker was, at one point, one of the top high school players in the class of, I believe it was 2017. And if you followed his recruitment, um, you know, 
for two, three years, all you heard from his camp, which his camp was this guy, Ed Smith, oh, he's going to play college basketball. Recruit him, recruit him, recruit him. He's going to play college basketball. And if I remember correctly, Arizona State was involved and Notre Dame was involved. And there was a couple programs that were, that were, that were somewhat involved. And the funny story that came out of that recruitment was that this guy, Ed Smith, really wanted Kentucky to get involved. And at some point, somebody did an interview with Thon Maker where they asked him about Kentucky. And he gave a great quote where he basically said, look, John Calipari said, I want to recruit you, but I need to know you're actually interested in coming to play college basketball. And when you're ready to cut out the nonsense, give us a call and we'll get serious. Well, they never cut out the nonsense and Thonmaker ended up declaring for the draft, being a lottery pick. Don't blame the kid for going pro, made a lot of money, et cetera, et cetera. Drafted by the Bucks, played with the Detroit Pistons. So a lot of people know that story. But there is another story that I think kind of paints the picture of who this guy, Ed Smith, is and why I am dubious at best that McCormaker ever plays college basketball. And here is that backstory. Many of you guys know I am a UConn alum, Okay. I don't want to call myself a UConn basketball encyclopedia, but I know a lot of random stuff. And I would say this in general, in college basketball, I know a lot of stuff. And so this guy, Ed Smith, kind of really grew out his, he really kind of gained his reputation because of the Thon Maker situation. There was actually a situation at my alma mater, UConn, five, six, seven years before that not a lot of people know about. And so when it comes to Ed Smith, this was the situation at UConn. 2010, 2011, going into that season. You may remember that season because UConn won the national championship with Kemba Walker. But going into that season, there was a very high-profile big man that UConn had on their roster named Ater Majuk. Very similar background to McCormaker. Maker. Ater Majuk was from the South Sudan, went to Australia, came to the United States, got set up with Ed Smith, and ends up at UConn. UConn fights like heck to get him eligible. They get him eligible late in the previous season. He goes through all the spring workouts, all the summer workouts. We get to October 1st, and you can Google this. His name's Ater Majuk, A-T-E-R-M-A-J-O-K. And Ater Majuk gets all the way to the start of the season and leaves the program. And nobody knows why, and nobody can figure out why, and... It was a very kind of interesting back and forth in the media because the assumption was that something happened with Jim Calhoun and Jim Calhoun threw him out of the program. So Jim Calhoun goes on the record and says, I wanted the kid back. I want him to play here. And Ater Majuk then goes to the media and says, I didn't want to leave. But if you read the tea leaves and you can go back and read the articles, they're still online. The Hartford Current did a big story about it. The New Haven Register did a big story about it. Basically, the in- insinuation without saying it was that this guy, Ed Smith, saw an opportunity for this kid to make some money, make a couple bucks, go to Australia, play overseas, and pulled him out of school a month before the season started. So as you can imagine, it did not leave the most pleasant taste in the mouths of the people at UConn. They ended up winning a national championship anyway, so it's irrelevant. But this guy did not have the best reputation. And then the Thawne Maker situation happened a few years ago where, again, he told people for two years, recruit my guy. He's going to college. We're not going to the NBA. Then... The second the recruitment heats up, guess what happens? He withdraws from, co- or he, you know, he he enters the NBA draft, never goes to college, and he had a bunch of schools waste their time. And so, by the way, that's part of the reason that McCore Maker's recruitment really didn't pick up until two, three, four, uh, even less than that months ago, because nobody actually thought this guy was going to college because they have dealt with this guy Ed Smith forever. And listen again. To be abundantly clear, I'm not picking on this guy, Ed Smith. I am just giving you facts of what his history tells us. And what his history tells us is he uses kids as leverage. He uses the media as leverage to get the best professional opportunity for his players. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. We all want to get paid. We all want to make money doing what we love to do. And so if the end game is make money Um, playing basketball, I'm never going to criticize anybody for that. But when you leverage colleges, when you leverage the media, when you leverage all of these different entities to get your kids uh, to that end game and you kind of like, I don't want to say ruin, you know, ruin situations, but you really screw people over along the way, you're not going to have the most pleasant reputation. And so when I look at the situation with McCormaker, Maker, here is why I'm doubtful that he plays college basketball. First of all, And again, I'm not criticizing the kid. I'm criticizing the adults around him. But kind of a little bit of a questionable, how did he end up in this situation to begin with? Went back and looked it up, made sure my facts were right. Five years of high school, 
five different high schools. And oh, by the way, one year he didn't even go to high school. He was homeschooled. So five different high schools in five years, plus a year of homeschool. And oh, by the way, this whole time going into this season, it was a foregone conclusion that he was going to go pro. He is draft eligible as a 19-year-old who technically graduated high school in 2019. Everyone assumes he's going to go to college, except he didn't or go pro, except he didn't play that well as a fifth-year player in high school this year, and he kind of had no choice. So he went through the motions with the pro process, and then next thing you know, he has no interest, and he has to go back to college. And so when I look at the situation with McCore Maker, this is where I start to see some red flags. This is a guy that, first of all, has a, 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 a checkered academic background. I'm not saying he's not eligible. I'm not saying I have any information. What I am saying is it's, it's a little bit, you know, do the, do the math in your head. Five high schools in five years, not blaming the kid, but it is a fact. I'd be a little concerned if I was trying to get him into my school, okay? Then on top of that, he goes through the whole pro process, wasn't very good as a senior in high school. Now, in his, or in his defense, he was injured, but wasn't very good tries to go through the process, doesn't get there, and so he decides to go to college. And so I guess where I'm at with McCore Maker is very simply this, is, is this kid really interested in going to college? Are the adults in his life really interested in sending him to college? Or are they once again, for the third time, fool me once, shame on me, fool, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Well, we're on strike three with Ed Smith here. Fooled us once with a, to- a Tara Majuk at UConn. Fooled us twice with Thon Maker. Strike three is with McCore Maker. This is a guy that leveraged UConn to get a pro contract for Ter Majuk, leveraged a bunch of schools to get a pro contract for Thon Maker. Now, think about the situation that happened at Howard, happened with this commitment a few days ago, right? This is a guy that we knew wanted to go pro, knew wanted to enter the draft. And so if he just goes through the recruiting process and he's trying to create buzz for himself in this draft process, yeah, he could have committed to Kentucky, By the way, I'm not even sold how much Kentucky wanted him. I think they wanted him, but I don't think it was like full speed ahead, like, you know, the full court press. He could have committed to Kentucky. He could have committed to UCLA. But if he commits to those schools, well, then he's just another name, another number, another, uh, you know, person in, in, in that school's history. He's just another NBA prospect that came through Kentucky or came through UCLA. But what is the one thing that he can do? What is the one thing, if he is going to commit to a college and he wants to create buzz, at the very least, if he just wants to create a brand and maybe draft buzz, what's the best thing you can do? Commit to a school that nobody's expecting. Commit to a school and become that first guy that commits to an HBCU. Commit to a school that you know you will be the number one story in sports, which is exactly what McCord Maker was on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so forgive me if I'm a little dubious that a guy in Ed Smith is not using Howard to leverage the situation to get McCore Maker a very lucrative contract professionally, whether it's overseas, whether it's in the G League, whether it's as an NBA draft pick, I don't know. But what I do know is if you're trying to create buzz for your guy, the best thing you can do is pick a school like Howard that is going to make national headlines, and it is going to make national headlines. And if you think the McCore Maker hype train is over, think again. Just for fun, and it's not even fun, I just wanted to do my homework. I went on Instagram right before I started recording this show, and McCore Maker already announced he's going to be on first take this week. He's going to be on a couple other ESPN shows this week. I wouldn't be surprised if he's on some of the Fox shows. And I don't blame anybody. This is the biggest story in sports. If I could get him on this show, I would get him on this show. But doesn't it feel like this was a little bit strategic? And by the way, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he plays college basketball next year. Maybe it is the greatest thing that ever happened. And for the record, just to make it clear, I want the kid to play college basketball. Any kid that chooses college basketball over a professional opportunity is great for me. It's great for my business. And you know what? If McCormaker goes to Howard and balls out, that is a great national storyline that everybody can get behind, which makes a show like this more relevant. So it's not to say... I don't want him to go to Howard, or I don't want him to play college basketball, or I don't want him to succeed. I'm just having my doubts over if it will actually happen or not. Now, speaking of which, let's actually get into that second part. Let's get into the reality of, let's say, what if he does go to college, right? What does it mean for the HBCUs? What does it mean for college basketball in general, et cetera? 
So I think, first of all, in the bigger picture, like I said off the top, there has been this conversation about young players choosing the HBCU path, and all I'll say is more power to them. If you can go to any school you want to in the country, if you can go anywhere, and oh, by the way, you can create headlines, and you can forge your own path, and if McCormaker does go to Howard, and if he does have success, and if he is drafted, this will be a game changer. And we already know that some of the younger players and some of the younger classes are talking about this. Mikey Williams, who's right down the road from me, right outside of San Diego, number one freshman in America, he is very vocal about wanting to go play at an HBCU. Good for him, man. I just want him to play college basketball. Whether that's at Duke, whether that's at Kentucky, whether that's at UCLA, or whether that's at Howard or Hampton or Texas Southern or Norfolk State or Morgan State or whatever, I don't care. I just want these kids to all play college basketball. It's good for me if they play college basketball. And so I certainly don't think McCormaker will be the last one, and he might be the first of a trendsetter in which a lot of kids choose this path. If they do, great. If they don't, that's fine too. College basketball is great when we have great players in the sport, and I don't care if they're at Howard. Listen, number one pick in the draft this year is either going to come from Dayton, Memphis, who played like three games, or Georgia. You don't got to go to Kentucky. You don't got to go to Duke. You don't got to go to North Carolina to get exposure. It helps. I think there's benefits to that, which we'll get to in a second. I do think there are benefits to playing at Kentucky or playing at North Carolina or playing at Duke, but you don't have to go there. Ben Simmons went to LSU, went number one overall. Markel Fultz went to Washington, went number one overall. If Mikey Williams ends up as good as we think he is and he goes to Howard or Morgan State instead of Duke or Kentucky, that's fine. I'm just happy he's playing college basketball. But in terms of McCore Maker himself, I will say this is a very interesting case study because I think there's this assumption that he's just going to go to uh, play at, at Howard and he's going to dominate because he's so good and he is going to be the biggest story in the sport and I'm just not sold that it's going to happen. And so what I would say about Howard is, you know, I, this is from a basketball perspective a very risky move if he does play college basketball. And by the way, that's another reason why I think that he might not end up at Howard is because if you go to Howard and you get exposed and you're on a team that isn't very good and you don't elevate that program, a little bit of it does fall on your shoulders. Now, you're not going to get 100% of the blame. Anthony Edwards didn't get 100% of the blame that Georgia was terrible. Uh, ben Simmons didn't get 100% of the blame that LSU was terrible. But I do think there's a possibility that you get exposed. And I do think as great of a story as it is that this kid chose an HBCU, I do think there are some inherent concerns if I was him, if I was advising him on actually playing there. The first one is, it's really hard to play at a low major program. You simply do not have access to the same things that they do at the high major programs. And it's so easy for everyone else, right? And I see so many people in the media, go to an HBCU, change the culture, blah, blah, blah. If you want to do that, great. But let's not talk like there are no negatives to that either. Because you go to Duke, you got the best strength and conditioning in the world. You obviously got a Hall of Fame coach. You got a, a, a chef with catered personalized meals. You got great amenities. When you go on the road, you're, you're chartering, you're staying in five-star hotels, and you're doing this, and you're doing that, and whatever. You go to Howard, you're probably going to play most of November and December on the road. You're going to be on a bus. You are not going to have those catered meals. I think I've said it on this show before, but... I have a buddy who coaches in an HBCU, and it's unfortunate, and I feel bad, but he is in a situation where when his players finish their workouts, they come to his office, and he gives them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because the school literally can't afford to feed him, and I don't know, for the record, if that's even an NCAA violation, but I'm just telling you right now, you know, you go to Duke, you go to Kentucky, you got a personalized catered meal coming to you after every single workout. You go to some of these small, low majors, and it's not, by the way, just the HBCUs. I mean, you're talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, if that, after a workout. You're talking about spending all of November and December on the road. Oh, by the way, McCormaker, Maker, who couldn't even dominate high school basketball as a fifth-year senior, 19-year-old this year? You don't think he's getting everybody's best shot every single game? And so, you know, it, it does kind of bother me, right? When you see a story like this, everybody jumps in and everyone's got their opinion. And listen, I'm in the opinion business. I'll never judge anyone else for having an opinion. But so many of these opinions are not very well educated. So many of these opinions do not talk about the potential risks if this kid does show up and play college basketball. This kid ain't Zion. This kid ain't R.J. Barrett. 
This kid ain't Anthony Davis, where he can just come in and completely dominate and it doesn't matter where he goes and the team's going to be awesome. I'm just saying, you're going to be on a bus in November and December. This is, by the way, assuming we have a normal college basketball season. You're going to be getting everybody's best shot. You're not going to have the same meals that other players get. It's going to be a lot of McDonald's after the game and Burger King and Subway and Wendy's. Not going to be staying in the same hotels. And it might not mean much to the casual observer. But that stuff matters. When you're trying to be at peak performance to impress NBA people, that stuff matters. And oh, by the way, that's on top of the fact that I still don't think he's going to play college basketball. So, you know, I, I just want to make the thing abundantly clear as I end this. Not being critical of the kid. I'm not even necessarily being a critical of the adults in his life because the adults in his life are just trying to make money like the rest of us are. I don't blame them. I'm just dubious that this kid ever plays college basketball because the history of the adults in his life tell me that he will not. And if he does play college basketball, I'm just saying it ain't going to be easy as roll out the ball and we're going to win a bunch of games. Howard went 4-29 and last year. They went 1-15 in in maybe the worst league in college basketball. And so I just think it'll be really interesting to see. I think it'll be really interesting to see what happens over the next probably, what, five weeks, four weeks as we get towards that August 3rd draft deadline. Because I still think McCormaker Maker may go play, in the, may, may declare for the NBA draft. I still think he may pursue an overseas contract, maybe go to the G League Select program. Or maybe he does it for the brand, maybe he does it for college basketball, maybe he does it for the future, maybe he goes to Howard, but even then I don't think it'll be easy. Point being, I think it's an awesome story. I hope he plays college basketball. It gives us another story to watch throughout the season. I'm just not sold that it's actually going to happen.